Well, good morning. Thank you for joining us for our Tuesday Talent Series. It is April 30th, and we're super excited to have CareerWise and Pinnacle Assurance with us today to talk about their amazing, like, Colorado-winning, top-notch apprenticeship program, probably one of the best in the country as well. So um, our um, sponsors today for our Talent Tuesday is Plant Moran and Pinnacle Assurance. Plant Moran is among the nation's largest accounting, tax, consulting, and wealth management firms and provides a full line of services to organizations in the following industries, manufacturing and distribution, financial services, service, healthcare, private equity, public sector, real estate, construction, and energy. This year, in 2024, they are proudly celebrating 100 years. Plant Moran has a staff of more than 3,300 professionals throughout the United States with international offices in Shanghai, China, Mumbai, India, Tokyo, Japan, and Monterey, Mexico. In Colorado, Plant Moran has served its Colorado clients for more than 40 years with offices in Broomfield, Denver, and Fort Collins. Plant Moran has been recognized by a number of organizations, including Fortune Magazine, as one of the country's best places to work. For more information, visit plantmoran.com. And Fatima, did you want to tell us some about Pinnacle Assurance? Yeah, so Pinnacle Assurance is a 109-year-old um, um, workers' compensation insurance company. We're Colorado's leading um, insurance com workers' compensation company, where we protect over 1 million employees in Colorado alone um, and over thousands of businesses um, and we also have one of our wonderful uh, apprenticeship program. So we're really excited to be here today. Thank you, Yvonne, for having me speak oh, today. We're so grateful for your sponsorship of this event as well and the leadership that Pinnacle Assurance is doing in this apprenticeship space for sure. So now let me introduce our two speakers. So we'll start with CJ. Education is about connecting passion, talent, and knowledge, bringing those components together to achieve educational goals, impacts families, communities, and the workforce. No one knows that better than Carolyn C.J. Renaud, Director of Business Partnerships for CareerWise Colorado. CareerWise Colorado is a leader in youth registered apprenticeships. Youth registered apprenticeship creates innovative, profitable, and diverse talent pipeline solutions. CJ has managed to incorporate her passion for workforce development and education into an amazing career. CJ embodies the collaborative spirit and brings her experiences from a career in law enforcement, K-12 education, and post-secondary education to her current role. Renaud is building relationships with community leaders, business owners, and organizations to open up pathways for opportunities for all individuals aspiring to increase their knowledge and skills. She's been championing collaborative efforts for 20 plus years and has seen the value these connections create. They are powerful and impactful at home, work, and community. Community, excuse me. I was all ready to go on to Fatima. So Fatima is the apprenticeship program facilitator at Pinnacle Assurance, where she focuses on ensuring a strong year one experience for apprentices. She's dedicated to teaching professional skills, positive habits, and acting as a mentor we're also, while also cultivating strong and meaningful relationships with the apprentices under her guidance. She aims to inspire apprentices to believe in their potential and pursue fulfilling career paths through hard work and dedication. Fatima's journey at Pinnacle began as an apprentice in cohort two of 2018, supporting the corporate citizenship and communications team. Fatima did not complete the three-year three -year program as she was hired within a year and a half as a business director assistant supporting four of Pinnacle's disciplined directors overseeing claims, return to work, medical case management, and customer experience. After four years in this role, she returned to her true passion for mentoring young adults by rejoining the apprenticeship program, coming full circle in her career. Additionally, she serves as co-chair for Pinnacle's employee engagement events, organizing signature events like the summer picnic and end of year celebration for 600 plus employees. She's also working to become a diversity, equity, and inclusion ambassador through Pinnacle's DEI program, as it is important for her to ensure that all employees are feeling valued and respected. These two ladies are amazing, and we're grateful to learn from them both today, and super excited they're sharing their time with us today. So I will take my slides down, and you guys can get started. Thank you. Thank you, Yvonne. Thank you for having us. Uh, good morning, Thank you for um, just showing up. There's a there's a, it's a very small um, group with us today. 
And um, I still think that the time that you spend with people and your ability to, to give us the hour, um, this, this what's left of the hour here is greatly appreciated. Um, Yvonne did such a wonderful job reading our bios that we don't have to we don't have to give an introduction, Fatima. So we can um, jump right into the deck here a little bit. But what I want to share with you all um, is we're going to just give a brief overview of um, the, the, the career wise model of apprenticeship. Then we're going to hear from Fatima. It is the Fatima show. Um, she is doing it. Pinnacle is doing doing apprenticeship the way it was envisioned to be done. And the, the next level is to have an apprentice leading other apprentices. I want to, to spend and have you be able to ask all the questions of her because her story is remarkable. Um, her talent is unbelievable. And so we're gonna jump right into some of the career-wise model that Pinnacle uses. And then Fatima is gonna share the Pinnacle model as it is implemented. Um, if you have any questions, throw them in the chat, uh, raise your hand, all the things. Yvonne, I cannot see the chat because I'm running the slides, but if you would please just, um, just pause me or pause Fatima and we will be happy to answer any and all questions. I'm assuming everyone can see my slides, Yvonne? Yes, we can see them. All right. So what is youth apprenticeship and what is it? It is not. Um, the work-based learning model corporate America is most familiar with is an internship and there is value to it. And because it's so ubiquitous, it's sometimes confused or used interchangeably with, inter with apprenticeship. Whereas internships are typically short term and not always paid, um, they provide minimal returns. It's kind of a try before you buy. Um, it is still valuable. Again, where an internship is typically going to end with a firm handshake and a bullet point on a resume, an apprenticeship should end in a job offer, either by training um, by the by the training company that, that that's employing the apprentice or another employer in the field. So apprenticeship looks long-term investment. There's a really good positive ROI in that you are getting a more highly skilled, um, quicker to upskill employee in your space. And so oftentimes we have to have that conversation initially with, with employers and school district partners even. Um, fortunately for us in, in Colorado, like our school district partners are very well versed on like the benefit of apprenticeship. Um, and they are leaning into that space of, career and college readiness programs. The US DOL defines apprenticeship as 2000 hours of on the job training, 144 hours of related training and instruction, along with an industry credential. I love industry credentials and certifications now because that is kind of the new, the new direction. Um, students are looking to get certified or credentialed and stack those things. So having them be stackable and then you're able Again, again, you're better off when you if you should leave that company than when they found you. If you have these industry certifications and stackable credentialing, we ask our employers to support our apprentices with an industry cert or a or a or a, or a credential of some sort. Um, every employer we have does that. Um, we also, with regards to the 40, 144 hours of related training and instruction. We typically have some training that CareerWise offers, and I'll go into that in a minute here about what the services are that we offer for our employers. But we, with our training of apprentices, we can knock out a third of those 144 hours. And then usually the, the industry or the business partner says, well, we're gonna add this industry credential, that's so many more hours. And then they usually have an in-house training. And that's how we usually um, navigate the related training and instruction because we feel like the employer is doing a lot already. They're employing, they're doing the 2000 hours, they're training, um, they're teaching that that student the, the family sustainable living wage career position. And so we try to meet them halfway or meet students where they're at with um, the RTI. And then the USDOL asks that you pay your students no less than minimum wage for an apprenticeship. However, I have yet to see an employer um, come in at, at minimum wage even or, or stay there for too long. We ask that you rate your students 100% 100% proficient in the skills that they are um, doing for you at that place of business. 
And then we ask that, and the USL DOL also asks that you have a wage increase over the lifetime of that 2000 hours of apprenticeship. Um, I always like to throw this slide in here. It's like my favorite slide because a lot of times our employers are like, oh, trades, apprenticeship trades, electrician, plumber, construction. The trades are doing apprenticeship beautifully. The ability to host apprenticeship in other avenues, in other jobs, in other careers that aren't necessarily trade related is astonishing to some people. And so we throw this slide in there to show that these positions are built out at the state already. Like we have the competencies for project coordinator. And when Fatima talks, she's going to talk to you about like what apprentices do at Pinnacle Assurance. Come on already. Like that is not a trade related um, industry partner. And so it's important to know a lot of times industries will come to the table and they'll say, yeah, we want um, apprentices in industrial manufacturing tech. Like they're going to build X, Y, Z or, or maintenance and facilities. They're going to take care of X, Y, Z. But then they start thinking, man, we have a need for these people in HR. We have a need for them in finance, in business operations. Business operations is one of our largest um, industry partner occupations. Advanced manufacturing, healthcare. Healthcare is on the path right now to building out a, an LPN to RN degree degree pathway in apprenticeship. So there's a lot that, that we can do in this space. And so don't we're only limited by our imagination. It's important to know what CareerWise does for the employer. So the biggest benefit that CareerWise provides are the, multiple, the multitude of services indicated in this slide. We have an entire education team that's dedicated to the recruiting process. This team, these team members are closely connected to all of our school partners, including administrators, counselors. The superintendent, Dr. Alex Marrero from DPS, went to Switzerland with us to learn the model of apprenticeship. He values it um, quite deeply in Denver Public Schools. The team really does the heavy lifting for our employer partners with recruitment. They bring you a candidate pool from which the employer gets to select from and choose who you interview. We can even create unique hiring experiences. We have one partner up North here who does kind of a hiring event where they do breakout rooms and puzzles and, and team activities with all the applicants together to see how they work. And then they assign them to certain specific um, departments within the organization. And they have a small meet and greet and have food with them. They don't ask them the traditional interview questions. So another huge benefit of our services is that um, all of the, tr the free training we provide to both apprentices and employers. So we provide apprentice training both prior to them starting with business essentials. Um, our employer training includes um, topics, uh, how to communicate with Gen Z, intergenerational communication, anti-bias hiring. We also have a team that's completely dedicated to um, the employer. So they're a one point, one, one stop shop, uh, one point of contact, We've had some downsizing at CareerWise and, and people have asked me how that's been. I think it has been fantastic because it's made us agile and it's allowed us to deliver a stronger, uh, better product and service to our employers. And so finally, we partner with the U.S. Department of Labor as the sponsor in order to assist the business with registering their apprenticeship. And that gives them that layer of credibility, currency, rigor. It tells people that I did 2,000 hours of the pinnacle um, apprenticeship and and I am a I am really good and so we register it for the for the um, employer so they don't have to do all that. Um, I thought it might be helpful just for you to see um, a bank of some of the successful employers that we do in fact work with and that are doing a lot of different um, unique apprenticeship um, occupations. I want to um, hand this over to Fatima so that she can share with us um, the why for Pinnacle and how they're redefining success and what that looks like for them. Her story is phenomenal. Um, Fatima, take it away. 
Awesome. Well, thank you all for having me here today. Um, I am Fatima Amador, a proud product of Pinnacle's Transformative Apprenticeship Program. As a former apprentice myself, representing the class of 2019 and alumni of Smoky Hill High School, I've experienced firsthand the remarkable impact of this program. And now as Pinnacle's Apprenticeship Program Facilitator, I am just privileged to guide others on the same journey of growth and opportunity. So today I'm just thrilled to share with you the story of our exceptional apprenticeship program, a program that has not only changed my life, but continues to unlock countless stories of opportunities for individuals across our community. So for the past seven years, Pinnacle Assurance has ran a youth apprenticeship program in partnership with CareerWise Colorado. This program has become a talent pipeline for our organization through hiring or graduating apprentices into hard to fill roles. This apprenticeship program allows us to positively impact our community by connecting 16 to 18 year olds to on the job skill building and education that leads to well paying careers. And so let me introduce you to our company. And to the next slide, please. Second, third, sorry. sorry. <laughs> um, Pinnacle is a 109-year-old workers' compensation company and Colorado's largest compensation carrier. We are a quasi-governmental nonprofit organization, which means, um, ooh, sorry, which means that the governor of Colorado appoints our board of director and the board appoints our CEO. So we believe that Pinnacle is a great environment for young people to grow up and find their way in. So we have over 200 unique job titles, which allows us to expose apprentices to many different career paths. And additionally, the culture is healthy and vibrant with employee engagement opportunities, work-life balance, and opportunities for growth and development. Um, we're a well-established brand with deep roots in supporting Colorado businesses and the people who live here. This culture has led us to win multiple top workplace awards, which certainly helps with recruiting. And then as you can see my background, just, you know, bragging a little bit about our wonderful company. On to the next one, please. Our vision at Pinnacle is to lead a revolution in caring for people, our businesses, and the community. And this commitment is evident in our competitive pricing and our strong injured worker and policyholder NPS scores. The apprenticeship program is a strong example of the caring impact that leadership and employees want to have beyond our business goals. Next slide, please. In addition to caring for the community, our apprenticeship program is good for business. So let's talk about why it is important for us to explore a youth apprenticeship model for our company. Next slide, please. So our journey began in 2016 with our human resources leadership team, um, reviewing our workforce demographics and discovering that nearly 30% of our employees would be over the age of 50 with 10 or more years of experience, which signaled the risk of an upcoming retirement cliff. We knew that in order to keep our business running um, with the same quality and efficiency, we would need to hire employees that could learn the pinnacle way and continue our legacy in Colorado business community. So this motivated us to begin to strategize about how we can engage a younger workforce. The projection was important for decision-making and we are glad we acted on it because it was actually 38% of our employees that ended up being within this retirement demographic by 2021 um, with COVID is a large portion of our employees made job transitions during those few years. On to the next slide, please. So one of the things that influences our ability to find great talent is the Colorado talent landscape. Around 2016, our state started seeing a trend of widening margin between available open positions and available workers. So some data that's been gathered over the past few years is that Colorado has two job openings for every available worker. There was many reasons for this gap, but Pinnacle prides itself on being a talent development organization for people of all levels. So conversations began around youth apprenticeship as being a way to help close the gap between worker skills and experience and open jobs. Next slide, please. 
On the education side, we also have data from the Colorado Department of Education and the Department of Higher Education that shows that our traditional educational pipeline is only effective for about 25% of the current student population. So this college talent pipeline graph is from 2022, but the data from the 2023 class is similar. Um, the graph reads as out of every 100 ninth graders, that start high school, 79 graduate on time. Out of those 79, around 43 enroll in college in the fall. And out of those 43, 32 enter their second year. Out of those originally enrolled, 25 graduate college within six years. And I'm sure this number isn't surprising to many of you, but insurance is the 201st most popular degree at universities. But it's actually more fun than you than it looks. Um, early 2023 data is indicating that high school graduation is up and now at 83%, but college enrollment is down with about 47% of graduating high school seniors enrolling in college in the fall after graduation. So this data tells us that the high school to college pathway isn't working for many students. And this could be for a variety of reasons, like the cost of higher education or a student's personal life needs. Um, we, we see it as evidence that multiple options to a great career are needed to ensure that young people aren't being lost between high school and a career that will sustain them and their future families. To the next slide, please. Awesome. Well, there are many ways to run a youth apprenticeship. Um, if you feel inspired to bring youth into your business and develop your future workforce, CareerWise will be a great partner to support you in that work. I will share with you what we've developed at Pinnacle and some of the results we've seen so far. Um, as a program, we aim to recruit and train diverse youth right out of Pinnacle's backyard, expand team bandwidth through apprentice supporting operations, we create a pipeline of homegrown talent for Pinnacle. We support aspiring leader development at Pinnacle through the experiential learning experience of supervising and mentoring an apprentice. And then we also influence the larger landscape of workforce development best practices by sharing what we've learned and accomplished like being here with you today. In order to meet these goals, we have many supports, a large part of that a large part of what makes our program successful is buy-in from Pinnacle leaders and employees or executives are very supportive of the program, funding it year after year and helping us to reduce barriers of success. Pinnacle employees are proud of the program and they participate in apprentices' successes by um, serving as professional network, coach, mentors, and work supervisors. And so our apprentices success depends on this engagement, as well as the support from CareerWise Colorado and the school staff. This wraparound approach ensures that they have the guidance needed to navigate this challenging and rewarding experience. So let's review the basics of our model. So we recruit high school juniors, seniors and rising seniors. And due to our cohort model of hiring six to eight apprentices per year, we have a set schedule. Our apprentices work Monday through Thursday from 1 to 5 p.m. in their first year to accommodate their high school or college school schedule. The next two years are flexible based on an individual apprentice needs. Apprentices have a hybrid schedule consisting of two days working from home and two days working from the office. We want to make sure that they stay connected to their colleagues and that they develop the skills they need to work in either environment. Since the goal of an apprenticeship is to prepare a person to be work ready, our model uses three years to develop an apprentice for a full-time role. The most important piece of planning that um, is that we do this for this part of the experience is to create a training plan with our team leaders that lays out the goals and benchmarks for the apprentice's experience. This increases buy-in and organizes the experience. And as, a, as an overview, let's just look at the differences between these three years. So first year's classroom and explore, oh, sorry, go, go right back, CJ, sorry. So first year's classroom and exploratory experience, 16 hours a week. Classroom includes career ready skills such as time management, goal setting, conflict management, project management, public speaking, giving and receiving. 
developing feedback. Exploratory experience includes spotlighting each team at Pinnacle to learn about what the team does, different roles that exist, any pathway to that career. Enrollment and DOL, registered apprenticeship program, and on the job experience, working on the team that they were hired onto. By the second year, they work up to 24 hours, including continuing their education, deep diving into a pathway that is of the apprentice's interest and a high need in our business and earning those credentials. And by the third year, they can work up to 28 hours, including a, and it also includes a reevaluation of their pathway. If found to be appropriate, the apprentice can continue expanding the breadth and depth of knowledge and skills, preparing for an entry level role. If available and the apprentice desires, they may try a related team with high demand to expand their experience and knowledge. And our cyclical model allows for backfilling with subsequent cohorts to ensure that our teams don't have to re-inherit work as the apprentices progress through their experience. On to the next slide, please. Awesome. So in order to support the development of registered apprenticeships in our state, which ensures quality and consistency of programs throughout various businesses, we registered nine pathways in business and technology with CareerWise Colorado as our sponsor. To the next slide, please. Uh, we want our apprentices to not only be gaining on-the-job training, but to increase their skills and competitive edge in the workforce, their quality education. While we don't require them to take college courses, we find that the additional exposure and skills learned in their college classes increases the quality of their apprenticeship experience because they're able to reach proficiency faster. To support education attainment, we pay for a portion of our apprentices' college tuition for the last two semesters of their third year. And additionally, we pay for and support apprentices through earning one industry recognized credential based on their pathway. Some examples of those might be certifications of completions for courses such as CompTIA, networking or security, Google Analytics, or designations such as a Society of Human Resource Management Certified Professional, a Certified Scrum Master, a Certified Associate Project Manager. Next slide, please. So let's walk through those various pathways that actual apprentices have taken. So the orange indicates the year that they were hired and two oranges indicate promotions. So this slide contains examples of how our apprentice, apprenticeship program is a talent pipeline for full-time engaged and sticky talent. We have hired 16 apprentices from over first from our first five classes into full-time roles, and nearly all of them are still working with Pinnacle, and some have been here for over six years like me. Um, so we've had seven that have been promoted at least one time since their initial hire. And so our model is flexible so young people can identify their interests and we align them with the needs of the business. So the first um, apprentice that we have is Eric. He started on the Lean Continuous Improvement Team and spent the rest of his time on the Robotics and Automation Team. He landed a full-time role in an adjacent tech team, Enterprise Content Management. And this is an example of how some apprentices don't get hired right into their apprentice role, but a similar role on an adjacent team. And then we have David, who began his apprenticeship um, supporting light tasks on the finance team. He did a stint on the underwriting team and was hired as an underwriting analyst. And he was recently promoted to an associate underwriter. And this is just an example of how an apprentice can be a very sticky employee, staying for years and adding more value as they learn and grow. Then we have Nare, who spent two years as a UX designer apprentice and was hired directly into a designer role. So technology roles can be complex and it might take an apprentice their entire experience plus formal education to be ready for a junior role. Then we have Aja who spent her first year on agency relations, verifying agent compliance, and she covered her boss's maternity leave and saved Pinnacle quite a lot of money from having to hire a temporary employee. So Ashley is such a great example because she was hired onto the customer service team in her second year. And then two, two years later, she was later promoted to a business development representative. 
And then most recently, she was promoted to an associate underwriter. And so Aja is an example of how the apprentice doesn't necessarily need to finish a third year of the apprenticeship if they are proficient enough to hire early on. Then we have Gabby, who started out as a software developer apprentice. She was so dedicated and excited to learn. She coded in her spare time. She landed a junior role in her second year and has been promoted to a full software developer. She is one of the most tenured um, developers on her team at over six years of employment. She's an example of how millennial and Gen Z apprentices tend to be more loyal and stay at their employer longer than their non-apprentice peers. Our apprentices have doubled and on their way to tripling the retention expectation from others of similar age demographics. So let's go into the next slide to learn a little bit more about Gabby's exciting story. I really like coding a lot. To me, it's one big puzzle. I like figuring out how to get all of these little pieces to work together to create something that someone can use and someone finds valuable to their life. Gabby is an incredible apprentice. She is someone who probably is one of the most tenacious learners I've ever met. When we give her an opportunity to broaden her skill set or we put a training or a tool in front of her, she not only gets it done, but she gets it done so effectively and so efficiently that honestly, the only challenge we have is getting her more tools. She has this drive to make a difference in the tech world. Um, she recognizes that it's more of a male dominated field, but she just feels like she's extremely competent in it and can be whatever she wants to be. I really wanted to feel like I was getting somewhere with this program in the three years that I have with this company. You have to focus, get your stuff done, hopefully at the end of the three years, they want to hire you. One thing about this program is it changes the trajectory of young people's lives. This three years is such a huge boost and it will continue to boost their economic status over time. I don't think you could really ever say you're completely ready, but you just have the feeling that you got to go for it and you got it. I really like coding a lot. To me, Awesome. And as you know, Gabby was hired and we couldn't be more proud of her success. But it's not just Gabby that can soar to such heights. Um, there are many deserving and impressive young people in our communities that can be a huge value add to our businesses. So one of the things that keeps us going with youth apprenticeship year after year is what we have expanded our definition of success and how we re and how we evaluate our return of investment. For us, success isn't about full-time hires. Our third cohort is a great example of how many forms of success of a youth apprenticeship program. So out of our nine apprentices, we hired four on in full-time permanent roles. I should note that hiring out of our program continues to diversify Pinnacle's workforce, not just by age, but by other social identities. 100% of our cohort three hires identify as people of color and 75% were bilingual, which is valuable because we serve so many Spanish speaking business owners. After adding much needed low cost bandwidth to our teams for the length of our program, four other apprentices went directly to college to seek degrees that aligned to their apprenticeship experience. We consider this a win because these students made informed decisions about their interests and aptitudes and enrolled in degrees that they know they will that will lead them to jobs that they will love. They won't be making such a large investment in higher education without knowing exactly how that investment could pay off for them. And we believe that many of them will boomerang back to Pinnacle in the future based on an exit interview data where 100% of them stated that they were interested in returning after college. The last apprentice went directly into the workforce into a well-paying job as a brand ambassador, opting not to go to college at this time. He recently was offered a job at State Farm as a claims adjuster. So imagine being 21 and qualified for such a role. His experience as a claims apprentice helped him access this well-paying job. And six out of the nine apprentices earned their DOL registered apprenticeship certification. Let's break down the ways youth apprenticeship benefits students and the business. 
So youth apprenticeship is so amazing for students because it's a unique opportunity to get paid work experience that is heavily focused on skill development and increasing competency to access well-paying roles. Their education is supported financially, helping them access beneficial education without incurring much debt. With education and on-the-job experience, apprentices' resumes are packed with examples of success that set them apart from their non-apprentice peers, leading them to jobs paying at or over the national average salary by the time they are 21 years old. Additionally, apprentices build a social capital through networking at their business that connects them to professionals who can support them as they move throughout their career. Our apprentices often have over 100 LinkedIn connections to people they've personally worked with and build relationships with over the course of their apprenticeship. For first generation to college students um, from low income backgrounds or newcomers, this social capital can be life changing. Um, I've already mentioned benefits to Pinnacle, but let's review them. So our apprenticeship program is clearly a strategic workforce solution that diversifies our talent pipeline. 83% of our total apprentice hires identify as BIPOC employees and 100% are Gen Z. Our apprentice add a unique perspective then um, a unique perspective when problem solving and allowing allows us to retain institutional knowledge as they learn from their supervisors and become experts themselves. Um, apprentices provide lower cost operational support by taking on work that then frees their supervisors to focus on higher level tasks or projects. We also frequently have apprentices covering short-term leaves of absences, avoiding the need to make temporary hires or overwhelming teammates with work. Supervising an apprentice is like management apprenticeship for our employees. We've developed an apprentice supervisor training certification program to develop aspiring leaders, their classroom instruction, and the practical application of these skills. So this includes classroom instruction, web courses, a book club, management experiences such as interviewing candidates, and evaluating employee performance, and 400 hours of on-the-job supervision of an apprentice. Around 50% of the supervisors that still work at Pinnacle have been promoted within a few years of being an apprentice supervisor. Additionally, some employees have reported that their passion for the oh, their passion for being involved with the apprenticeship program is a strong reason for why they continue working at Pinnacle. Pinnacle is all about Colorado, and our apprenticeship has allowed us to work with 24 different high schools and seven higher education institutions. We have worked with over 70 apprentices total. A side benefit is that our program enhances our reputation and brand awareness in Colorado. For example, our social media posts about our apprentices get the most engagement out of all posts. The intentional design behind our apprenticeship program has influenced the overall philosophy of employee professional development. The success of the program for growing talent has led us to more intentionality and transparency around development and career progression options for our full-time employees, including clarity around competencies for roles, career pathing, intentional development plans, and cross-functional hands-on learning opportunities we call learning through experience. Learning through experience is where time is allotted for employees to take part-time gigs on other teams. They get some training and then contribute with hands-on work. It's also like a mini apprenticeship that helps us be agile and respond to business needs with our current talent whilst developing the individuals who participate. As you can see, our youth apprenticeship can transform your business. Our model won't work for every company, but we're glad we can be proof of success. Um, there have been challenges along the way as we've learned how the program can work for us. But the great thing is that you can adopt a model that works best for your business. So I encourage you to talk with CareerWise about what youth apprenticeship can look like for your company. Thank you all for having me present. Great. Thank you, CJ and Fatima. Those were amazing statistics and information. And um, I just love the whole social media. <laughs> uh, that's the part people want to hear about, which is great. I did just have a few questions, but we'll see if anybody else does. Jesse, 
Do you have any questions? No questions for me right now, but thank you so much. That was lovely and informative. Yeah, super great. So I wanted to be sure that we um, we recognize they also get high school credit while they're with you during that first year, right? And during that time as well. So um, I think we said it quickly. So I want to be sure that everybody knows that too. So helping with their high school graduation in order to move on for sure. And then yeah, I wondered- one, one thing I would I would add there, Yvonne, is that um, what we what we learned from like our district, like District Six is one of the leaders in this space up here in Greeley in Northern Colorado, and initially um, graduation rate, right? That's always the big thing for Dr. Filch and the superintendents across the state. Those things those things were down. And if I'm a high school student and I am not engaged in high school, then I don't go to high school and I don't graduate on time. And I think um, I, I think we do we have some we have a, a work based learning navigator um, Jesse on the on the call. So we all know like we've got to find other ways to. And I may not be an athlete. I may not be in the band. I may not be in drama. So what engages me? And so I think what's unique about our school systems now is they're like we're giving credit for um, for apprenticeship hours. Like at District Six, you get a one point five science credit for your apprenticeship if you're in the junior model of apprenticeship and if you're having a work-based learning experience in many of our high schools, you're getting credit for that time served and you're being allowed to st stack these credentials from an earlier age. And so it's super important that if I'm in school and I'm engaged and my work matters to my school, then I stay there and I graduate on time and everybody loves that. And so it's not an either or, it's an and. Right, right. Yeah, and some folks, I think when we were all in Switzerland, um, we met a gentleman who said, I was a great high school student. I had great grades, but I didn't see how high school applied to work. And my apprenticeship got me into work. I was ready to go to work at 17 yeah. years old. And so for sure, I think you're absolutely right about that. And then I just wondered, you know, I spent a lot of time listening about sports. I'm way into sports and NIL and how, you know, how in the portal and how kids come. And, and, you know, it feels like these poor coaches have to like social media, these kids to keep them coming back. And so I wondered... Um, as the students that have left you to go on to college, and you're exactly right, Fatima, that they're really figure like, I know exactly what I need to go to college for. Hopefully they graduate in four years and not the six that you referenced. You know, the 150% is six years. And as a parent of a graduate in four years, you're grateful it's not six years as you're paying <laughs> for it, right? And so it's a big deal. But I just wondered, do you keep up with them? Do you like, you know, text them every once in a while and say, how's it going? Are you, are you hoping to sort of bring them back into the fold with you all? Um, yeah, I mean, with my apprentices, I try to keep in contact with them. Like I, if it's their birthday, I'll reach out. Or if I'm thinking about them, I'm like, hey, how's everything going? So I definitely still like to keep that connection. And then most of the time, they also add me on LinkedIn. And um, we had one apprentice that actually moved to Oregon. And she messaged me a couple of weeks ago. I was like, hi, Fatima, how's everything going? I, I missed the program. So we get a lot of that. And they may move back 10 years from now, right? And then reach out to you all. So, so I think that's amazing. I think these connections that you make are great. I've had interns over the years. And, you know, five years later, I'm getting my master's. Can you write me a res? You know, something uh, help with a recommendation or so. So so it's just such the community building part, community involvement part that you talked about is just huge. It's so great. So but Tima, what do you about. wish you knew before or after you started apprenticeship? Yeah, so I'd say just expecting that young people are eager, but inexperienced. Um, so growing a youth apprentice means strengthening your own management and coaching skills to meet these very new to the workplace employees where they're at. And then also helping them learn and grow. Um, it takes some time to get them up and running, but the effort is all worth it. Um, I'd also like to say maybe like training plans are key to success. When we started, uh, we would build the airplane while we were flying it. And this led to less than the stellar experience and burnout for apprentices and supervisors. So identifying those desired outcomes and building those training plans in advance provided a roadmap for apprentice and supervisors, which helped gain buy-in and organize their learning experience. And I'd also like to say um, it helps apprentices become independent sooner, reducing the work workload for the supervisor faster. Um, I'd also like to say um, even with a training plan, an apprenticeship has to be agile. So much happens in three years. 
some of it good and some of it challenging. So for example, roles that we had planned out for our first year apprentices were automated or reduced by the time those apprentices completed the program. So we had to prepare them for the next higher level, which required a shift uh, of training. And so other times the apprentice um, interest, you know, they would shift or we would uncover a skill or passion that they didn't know they had. So for example, we had one apprentice um, who, who started out as a finance apprentice, and then he discovered a true passion um, for data. And so we were able to shift him into data science um, and he changed his degree at CU Boulder to data science as well. And so now he's a successful data scientist, changing the world by you know working on the newest technology. So. If we have too rigid of an experience, apprentices might not be engaged or may exit the program early as we might miss out on their true potential. And the positive ripple effect of the program in our business is also another one. So we talked about some of the amazing impacts that the program has had. I wish we had, had all day to chat um, so I could share about all the ways apprentices and Pinnacle employees' lives have changed for the better because of the program. Um, but if we would have known how huge this would be, the encouragement would have helped us as we experienced growing pains. We'll and hand it back to you, Yvonne. No, no, I was just going to add that I think, you know, what Fatima talked about is no different than any other employer or that employment employee, I should say that way, I guess, that you have. I mean, their job may become automated. Things may change. So the apprentice isn't that much more complicated. I know in healthcare, the big question I always got was, how are you letting them into healthcare at 17 years old? You know, are they going to give away the secrets or are they going to, you know, talk about the patients? And, and we never had that happen. You guys are also taking folks before they're 18, right? So, so did you have to write new policies? Did you have any issues? Was there something that happened at all? I mean, or not? <laughs> That's a really good question. I mean, do you want to do you want to help me with this one, CJ? Sure, sure. <laughs> I, I would be happy to jump in there. I, I I think what 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 we learned, Yvonne, was a lot of times employers were like, "Oh, we can't have a seventeen year old in the in the factory doing X Y Z." And really, when the H so so we try to incorporate the HR leads early, supervisors and HR leads, and and you know the the heart and head and the champions, they're always going to be in the room. They love it. But what we learned was that um, from HR leads, a lot of times employers, those were their rules. That was an internal, an internal barrier that was created. Um, Vestas wind blades is a perfect example. They're building 800 ton wind blades, wind turbine blades. And the, and the first thing people said was, we can't have 17 year olds, 18 year olds in their hands on those 800 ton wind blades. And the HR lead was in the room and said, yes, we can. Here's and and then it becomes a discussion of juvenile labor laws and what students and even in the hospital those partners said as long as they sign the the um, privacy agreement like we have a regular adult employee do and and even they even went a step further some of our healthcare partners um, early in the early stages were like well have their moms and them sign it you know it, but they were like really if I sign it I'm responsible for the privacy and the and the information on there. And, and I don't know that we've, that we've had any problems and we've had more doors open and juvenile labor laws are, are pretty specific even. Um, and those helped career wise to, to morph the model from a three year to a two year to a 15 month model where you're hiring graduating seniors. So as long as we're recruiting them out of high school um, and, and we can register those students and they're able, they're able to, you know, transfer transport themselves to and from and they're able to sign the agreements because they're 18 and so we've kind of listened to employers to get around that we have bankers right bank employers partners that are like um yeah we gotta have, they gotta be 18 so we recruit <laughs> them in high school in that senior year we front load the registry the related training and an instruction front load the education and so they're even quicker than the upskill because they're graduating they're coming in with a credential or certificate and they're ready to launch Right. Um, right. Pinnacle does it uniquely because it's 16, 16 to 24, and then 24 to 32 or 40 hours. So yeah, we just have to get around and, and look at what the real barrier is. Is that internal or is that a, is that a juvenile labor law? Right. I agree. And Julie's um, put some comments in the 
Chad also, she said, I'm at Pinnacle, you guys have them sign an NDA. And so we do confidentiality and ethics training, again, like you do for every employee, right? It's not yeah. any different. And you haven't had any data related issues in seven years. At Columbine, where I worked before the chamber, we never had any HIPAA breaches. We never had any issues either because, again, you do the training and um, it's HIPAA isn't an age issue. It's a supervisory and an education yeah. issue, right? And so when when we were asked by the Department of Labor, why are you why aren't you, why are you not? We were going to start it after high school too, and we said, well, it's a labor law. We can't have them starting at seventeen or sixteen. And they said that's not true. And then I said, well, I'm sure it's a Medicare law. <laughs> it is not. And then I was <laughs> sure it was some sort of OSHA regulation and it was not. And we found no place where there's an age issue or the age situation. Right. And um, I just, having a 24 year old, I just know that when I went off to high school from, from high school to college, I was pretty young and pretty naive. And these kids nowadays are wiser and smarter. They're better educated. They have a phone in their hands with information. You know, I just think that that this old notion of under 18 needs to go away because it's really yeah. affecting kids' ability to get in these work-based learning programs. So Very I have personally true. said, if you have a barrier, you call me and I will talk to whoever that is because it, it is internal and it's artificial, right? For sure. Yes, so, so you guys are great. And having all this experience and saying it never really happened is so important for other businesses to hear. So I appreciate that very much. So great. Any other questions or things you guys want to talk about? I did just want to plug as a former apprentice supervisor at Pinnacle, um, the value that that brings um, for giving me the opportunity to supervise, mentor um, one of our uh, first year apprentices and it, where there wasn't a position open my in my department to give me you know any sort of management training this gave me the opportunity to um, build that skill set go through the apprenticeship uh, program certification the supervisor <laughs> program certification and uh, work with uh, Julie um, and Fatima and the whole team um, on on sharpening my skill set so that at some point I can be promoted and um, be able to manage somebody with some experience under my belt instead of just going in with none. So um, it's just a, a great testament to the program and Fatima, thank you for um, everything you said today it was just spot on and, and CJ, thanks for the partnership. And we're just really happy to be able to um, be here today and, and thank you, yeah. That's amazing. We appreciate you sharing your time and all your expertise and and, and opening your door, right, to, to how you did this, how it started, you know, what your success is and all of that. I think, again, as I said at the beginning, you're a beacon of light for all the rest of the state and and someone that everybody should emulate. And I'm sure if people called, you give them answers, right? You would help them if they had any questions. For 100%. Sure. It's part of your values, for sure. So, so we thank you for being here. We have one more. Well, we have actually two more talent series coming up. We have next week and we have um, Elevations Land Trust, who's talk, who is um, has a model for home ownership, where people can buy homes in the four hundred, three hundred eighty thousand dollars, and they're going to visit with us about that, and businesses can learn about that. And then um, Jeff Havens, who was a speaker at our talent summit, um, had a he travels all over the globe to speak, and he's doing another session for us, and he was actually at DIA. And his flight got changed and you didn't think he had enough time to do a session, then drive. And then he did not have enough technology. So we rescheduled him for May 28th. So we'll have him at the end of the month as well. So again, thank you to Pinnacle Assurance for um, helping us put this event together for CareerWise as well, and as well, Plant Moran. So um, we will send this recording out and the slides out to everyone and we'll put it on our website and it'll be a permanent resource there as well. And I think we the great information that was here, I have a lot of people I'm already thinking about. I'm going to send the slides out to have asked me about apprenticeships. So thank you very much. So.